Hello friends, in this tutorial we'll be talking about Wubble base pairing and also about Wubble hypothesis, right? So let's talk about it. Wubble, uh, first let's talk about Wubble base pairing and what is Wubble base pairing? Wubble base pairing means the base pairing be between RNA, it's not about DNA base pairing, it's the base pairing between RNA molecule which does not follow the general rule of Watson Creek base pairing kind of weird right now let me explain the thing is in Watson Creek base pairing we know a very simple and easy way in case of RNA that adenine always pair with uracil because in RNA otherwise in DNA it will be thymine guanine always pairs with cytosine and that's true for RNA also so these two type of base pairing are termed as Watson Creek base pairing which we are more accustomed with now the thing is any other type of base pairing in RNA except for this Watson Creek base pairing is termed as Wubble base pairing, right? Now what is this kind of base pairing? It is not obeying the rule of Watson Creek pairing that is A with U or G with C. It is a different type of base pairing process, right? For example, let's say here why we need all this base pairing thing. Now if you imagine in genetic code, I think you are familiar with what is genetic code. Genetic code is a construct of all the codons which are three nucleotide uh, set which codes for a particular amino acid in our body and genetic code consisting of all these codons. Now if you follow that codon, if you, if you have this any book in your hand, if, if you look at the codon, if you look at the genetic code table, you will find a very important thing is that in ev every section of genetic code, what will you find is that let us say UG, let us say this is the first two, these are the first two uh, nucleotides. This remains constant and rest of the sequence, the third position sequence are usually varied. If you watch it now, if you have a book, pause the video, just get the book in or if you have internet, just open a genetic code. Uh, if you find, you will find that. In all these codes or codons, what you will find is that first two positions are conserved, the third one is slightly varied, the third one is different, right? So if we choose a codon that is present in mRNA and an anticodon that is present in tRNA, those two things should have a complementary nature for bringing up a particularly specific amino acid sequence into the place. And for attaching with a particular amino acid sequence, there is a specific tRNA, amino acid tRNA present, right? Now what happens actually in our body, there are many different varieties of amino acids present. So if we need to carry a separate tRNA for all the amino acids, it's kind of very much complicated. So sometimes in our body, what happens is that one or two different tRNA will bring different varieties I mean we'll have different varieties of amino acids coming due to the position of a particular codon because for each codon represents a particular amino acid but slightly variation of codon can change the amino acid in the third position of that codon right now if we look at here in much more detail let's say generally these are the pairing right Wubble pairing means any other pairing in mRNA except for this, right? So what kind of pairing we can observe in Wubble base pair? Now the thing we can observe here is let's say, let's say these are the anticodons for tRNA which is present in tRNA anticodon loop and let's say we have another section of codons which is present in the mRNA, okay? So let's look at the Wubble pairing here. If we have adenine in anticodon in tRNA, the usual way of pairing is with U, strong pairing, which is a Watson Creek base pairing. If we have a C, it should pair with G. This is also okay. This is also Watson Creek pairing. This is also Watson Creek pairing, right? No problem. Now, if you have, however, have a G, that should pair with C based on Watson-Kick pairing. But 
this g can also pair with u not as good as it pairs with c but it can pair with uracil this is wubble base pairing okay and again if you have u here that u can pair with so let me take this a but it can also pair with g this is also a wobble base pairing because in its vice versa if g pairs with u you can also pair with g is wobble base pairing and the last one is i it is hypoxanthin a different base called hypoxanthin it's a derivative from inosine bases that's why the term says i for inosine now this inosine can pair with adenine it can pair with cytosine and also this inosine can pair with uracil right this inosine can pair with either adenine or cytosine or uracil so this all this pairing of in inosine with adenine cytosine or uracil will be termed as wubble base pairing because this hypoxanthin is not a common base that are found usually but this hypoxanthin is found in rna more often than it is found in dna that's why wubble base pairing is more found in rna because most of the wubble base pairing are consisting between this hypoxanthin or inosine derivative with adenine cytosine or uracil okay so that is this are the type of wubble base pairing that we see now what is wubble hypothesis wubble hypothesis is the different variations of base pairing between the different base analogs in rna and this whole chart that they provide us this is termed as the wubble hypothesis that means according to wubble's law what kind of base pairing we can observe in mrna or in between mrna and trna that is called wubble hypothesis right and why we are talking so much about wubble hypothesis the idea is if we have a sequence called let's say aci in codon let's say if we have this in codon it means we can have because it can pair with remember u g a u g c u g u so what does that mean same thing as remember so if we have a codon say aci somehow in the mrna if we have this in our mrna it can pair with uga or ugc or ugu from trna from anticodon but remember all these different types can code different amino acid sequence so for one codon we can have different type of amino acid sequence due to this wubble hypothesis that means if we look at here is that in this case again we have ug constant in the first two place only the last one varied due to the presence of hypoxanthin or inosine so that is the beauty of wubble hypothesis so what are the applications we can use this wubble hypothesis process we can use this hypoxanthin for unknown dna sequencing process and also for the pcr primer designing for any unknown gene now imagine for designing a primer for pcr we must know uh, the upstream and downstream sequence of that unknown gene otherwise we cannot produce a primer right so for unknown genes what we can do here we can take this hypoxanthin type of base and put it in the third place so that we can have a room for binding with three different possibilities more than one so it helps us it increases our probability for the primer to bind with our accurate dna region right so this is the application of wubble hypothesis and to design those type of primers which are called as universal primers
यूनिवर्सल प्राइमर्स ओके इन द यूनिवर्सल पीसीआर रिएक्शन ओके सो दैट्स काइंड ऑफ ओवरऑल व्हाट इज वोबल हाइपोथेसिस एंड आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द वीडियो इफ यू लाइक द वीडियो प्लीज हिट द लाइक सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल सो दैट यू कैन गेट द नॉलेज ऑफ ऑल दिस वीडियोस इन फ्यूचर टू एंड शेयर इट विथ योर फ्रेंड्स इन सोशल नेटवर्क थैंक यू